May the Lord be with us and talk to us and uh, help us enjoy His presence. Amen. Brethren, uh, as you know already, heaven starts here. And it's depending on us when and to how to, to which intensity. He wants us to be recipients of His presence. It was His intent from the beginning, from eternal ages, that from each of His creatures to make a temple in which the Creator may dwell. Now, the complication of God is that we are free to accept or not to accept this uh, offer that he has uh, offering to us. Let's read anew. As living stones are built up in a spiritual house, a priesthood of God. What does it mean, priest? Somebody making a kind of uh, intercession, a kind of connection between a sinner and a holy, infinite, righteous God. And you are the priesthood. That means because Christ is in us, we become like him and we become priests as he is the only priest. And we have the only one high priest and that's it, the priesthood. But by having him, we become his hand on earth. Now, the other aspect, living stones. How, how is that, living stones? We may uh, think a little bit. Uh, people were, during centuries, during millennia, they were uh, happy with the idea to build something uh, endurable, yeah, something to, to endure forever. And they were not only doing uh, strong things, they were doing nice things. Uh, I had uh, once the possibility, the opportunity to visit Acropolis in Athens, or to visit some places in Rome, to see those stones of millennia, yeah. Living stones or just nice stones? What do you think? Just stones. I visited sometimes Vatican. It's overwhelming to see those uh, extraordinary sculptures. I I infinite value. Nobody can evaluate exactly which are the values uh, all together gathered in in uh, Vatican living stones or just beautiful stones what do you think that's the problem but our God promised to you and to me to make us not only beautiful uh, sculptures or beings or living not only beautiful, living stones for one side to, to have the strength and the power of a stone when you have, when you are under pressure, not to seize, yeah? Like a stone, but not cold and uh, inflexible, yeah? Like as a stone, but living, living stone. This means you, you can feel, you can understand what's about, you can have desires, a uh, living, yeah? You can choose and you act or work. That's the difference, infinite difference between a beautiful sculpture being made, I don't know, Michelangelo or uh, I don't know, yeah. Or being a uh, special <coughs> creation of a living God. It's therefore a living, a living stone with its place in the extraordinary living temple of God. A temple that moves all over the, the earth, yeah, and one day will be moved to his uh, holy uh, heavenly kingdom, yeah. continuing to be his temple. Brethren, is infinite. The offer of God is infinite. Therefore, Satan is crazy against us to destroy this plan of God in us, to make us pour something around. 
and the complication that God has in this extraordinary uh, plan He has with you and with me is that coming from a good, blessed root. Something good gave a complication to God, and that good is your freedom. We can choose to be such wonderful living stones of God, where, or we may choose something else. Choose to reject Him and choose our own ways. We choose our own development and whatever. Eve tried in Eden to find a better way comparing with the way of God. And he did, she did. And you know where we are after. In the city of God, in the temple, living temple of God, there's a peculiar um, requirement. It says, with, where, wherein dwelleth only righteousness, and uh, in no wise enter into it anything that defiles. Yeah? N not defile thing, not a thing that can defile something else. There's no defile thing. That's the thing. And we are as we are. You know yourself in a measure, I know myself in a measure, I don't know exactly who am I in reality. But what's for sure, that we are sinful, rebellious, uh, with no light, with no flexibility, with no reflection of the reality of God in us naturally. Yeah, we are as we are. And people like me and like us have no room in heaven in the living temple of God. We have to become like Him. We have, we have not to be the rock, to be the living stones out of the rock and transformed and uh, yeah, melted by His love. I'll take you the uh, heart of stone. Yeah. And I'll give you a heart of, of flesh. And you become a living stone, yeah, a living rock, a living stone, not only a stone, because, yeah, Peter was a kind of stone, but he was melted and has become something else. Praise the Lord for that. Let's take a lesson of the past. You remember, Solomon had 70,000 carriers and 80,000 stone cutters. Do you remember the context? He had on his heart, and his father had on, head, on his, his heart, to build what? To build a temple for the infinite God, in which the infinite God may dwell here on earth, in Jerusalem. And then Solomon started the project. He did a beautiful project, inspired by God. Beautiful project. And then he started to prepare the materials. And what did he do? He gathered these people here. 70,000 carriers, that means to carry the stones from the, uh, how do you call it? Quarry. And then 80,000 stone cutters in the hills, as well as 3,300 foremen who supervised the project. So, this was the thing. When the house was built, it was uh, with stone prepare and the quarry, so that neither hammer, nor axe, nor any tool of iron was heard in the temple's construction. You have a quarry far away. You have some thousands of people cutting, yeah? yeah. And uh, hewing and polishing and doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And then you have some other thousands carrying all these tons and tons and tons of material to the place. And you have the engineers and you have the people there and they'll put things together. And there was no hammer heard. 
question. These stone cutters did or did not a good job? Did they? A good job, a perfect job. Because if it was not perfect, it was like, yeah, then those, uh, uh, they, they had to be, yeah, sizzled, yeah, at the spot to make them fit together so that they will resist and become one of the wonders of the world and so on. But was no need. That means the stone cutters were professionals. Do you agree with that? Okay. Now, out of this interesting part of the Bible, because it says that every word in the Bible has a meaning for us and is a lesson for us. Therefore, we want to extract the um, lessons for, our, uh, for ourselves. We need to become like him, not to continue as we are. As we are. Then some other um, yeah, language of the Bible says, wash me. In other words, in the, in the context of the stones being in the quarry of the world. Uh, yeah, cut me, uh, sizzle me, make me, uh, polish me, to, yeah, wash me. Purge me, wash me that I should, should be whiter than snow. Question, if you pray to God, does he know how to do it? Yes. Second question, is he a fantastic professional on that or not? Yes. That means if we want to be not only clean, nice uh, objects in the, yeah, we want to be living stones. That what should we ask him? Cut me, yeah, and as he is the best professional on that, he will do it for us. In the human heart, there is a natural selfishness and corruption, which can only be overcome by most thorough uh, discipline and severe restraint. And even then, it will require years of patient effort, yeah, effort, and earnest uh, resistance. How is that? We have some stuff, and it requires years for God to polish and to, uh, yeah, cut and to make the thing be perfect as to fit in the temple. Not in Jerusalem, by the way, in the temple, in his temple. That means in himself, because in, in Jerusalem, there's no, no, no temple. He is the temple. That means we belong to God. We have to fit there and no unclean thing can get there. And we have so much stuff that has to be overcome and cut off and yeah, cleansed out. Therefore, God permits us to experience the ills of poverty, the places, uh, he, and places us in difficult positions, that the defects in our character may be revealed and their asperities be smoothed away. Yeah, asperities. So that you become like a marble. A perfect sun shining, yeah, to reflect the beauty of, of the Creator in your polished surface, like a diamond. Fantastic. And He wants that, that. And He said, make sense, yeah, uh, may it take it as it should, but make sense. I love you, my children. I want you to be there. Come with me. I'll do the thing for you. Now, question. How long does it take this process? Yeah, uh, we are not speaking about uh, the temple in Jerusalem. We are speaking about us being the stones and the, about the temple of God. How long? Uh, okay. How? Some? Life term. Oh. Is it good news or bad news? <laughs> 
<laughs> Let, let's take some example, Very, especially the young people. Please help me, help me to understand here. Let's put some question here. Moses, how long did it take for Moses? It looks like he became a wonderful, fit stone, living stone of God. Where is he now, by the way? Where is, where is Moses now? Can, can, can you tell us? Where is Moses now, according to your... Yeah? Where is he now? Where is he now? Yeah, thank you. Moses is in heaven. Yeah, that means he fits there as a living stone of God. That means it worked. How long? Now. How, how much? 20 years? Okay. Uh, it looks like about 40 years. And then he continued the polishing process and uh, away, yeah? But the main thing was done in how much time? Where was that? In which place? In the wilderness of Midian. Yeah? Okay. For Is it uh, okay or is it quite a long time? Do we still have 40 years? No. Yeah. The disciples. I mean, 11 of them, because one broke up in the, pro in, the, in the process, he was broken. It was, didn't fit the thing at the end. Yeah? 11. How long? Uh, okay. Yes, thank you. Three years and a half. Oh, it's better news, yeah? Comparing. Do we still have three years and a half? Are you sure? Young people. Okay, I, I suppose that you are still projecting your life, yeah? You, you don't uh, plan to die within... Uh, I, I believe that, yeah? Are you sure? Okay, let's ask this gentleman here. Are you sure that you still have three years and a half? Sister, are you sure? Who knows? Am I sure? Not about three years and a half. About one more day. Should I uh, catch Sunday tomorrow, Sunday evening, 10 o'clock in the night? Should I? Am, am I am I sure of that? Okay. God's grace is great. I suppose, I pray, if the Lord helps us, yeah, we may live tomorrow and then on Monday and then this week and so on. But look, to count on ears, it's quite dangerous. Then please think on the project of God. The Lord see you and see me as we are. And he knows as we should be in order to get in heaven, to get with him. And he know how to do it. Question, w w shall I allow him to do that work with me? Or am I uh, procrastinated, uh, procrastinating the, the project of God? Yeah, prolonging the process because look, the, don't, don't, this is too much. Okay, I've been in the in the dentist office, yeah, I'm not happy to go to the dentist, but I have to, because if not, who knows what happens, yeah? And sometimes when you become white-faced, and he knows that it's very painful, he's asking you, and you are with an open uh, 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 yeah, uh, mouth, and you cannot answer. He says, uh, should we uh, have a pause, a break now? Should, should we stop? Yeah. And you show a sign by your hand, that's too much. That means what? That he cannot do the job by the time. He has to call you next week or, yeah, next time to continue and so on. How long are we supposed to do, not to do for ourselves, to accept to be done this process of polishing and of, uh, how long? Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul, Apostle Paul. How long? We may, okay, how long? Some other opinions? Three days, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Because it, it's, uh, the Bible says that he was blind for how long? That he didn't have any eyes to see anymore anything. Yeah? 
then he only saw that light in his mind. He was blind, seeing in the mind the presence and the light of God. And it didn't take 40 years for him. In three days, he melt down inside. I said, better news, yeah, comparing with three years and a half. Can I put another question even better with this one? What do you suggest? Me. Come, how's that? The man on the cross. Thank you. This was the thief on the cross. How long? The process. How long? No, because in four hours they died all together. How long? Maybe half an hour. What do you think? Is it, uh, please, pardon? Uh, not just seconds. Uh, 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 we appreciate your heart, uh, little gentleman. We are so happy that you said seconds because who knows can be possible. What is impossible for our God? But imagine how painful it should be within seconds to <laughs> yeah, cut off all the terrible stuff that we still have with us. And let's try to make a, a application. If somebody speaks bad against you and you know that's not true, how do you feel? <coughs> Smiling, happy, thanking God. Okay, God, thank you that you cut off something from me because this guy is challenging my ego, myself. Yeah, and the self has to be crucified. However, therefore, I'm making, uh, yeah, Amen. steps of advancements. Praise you. Is this our reaction? Praise you, Father, that this guy or this person here speaks bad against me. Him, rude, or he behaves or other. Uh, is this way we do? Ah, look what happened. I'll speak with Brother Boris, the minister here, to look what, what he did. Then we have to yes. call the committee. And <laughs> Is it? And the Lord says, okay, let's put the hammer away for the, because look, this, they are not accepting the process. And time is running. How long? Friends, how long? Sometimes, even worse than that, we just run out from his uh, workshop, yeah? I run out from his, from his hands. No, I don't, yeah? I remember when my mom took me to the dentist the first time. I wouldn't open my mouth. And I was terrified. Yeah, on that chair there. <laughs> And he wanted to help me. But it was painful. To be cut off. Yeah. Things to be cut off from me. It's painful. Is it or not? We have to agree. Painful to what? To self or to the soul? <laughs> to self. Then who cares about the self? Good. Let it die. God. God be uh, blessed if it would die at once. Yeah. Our son, then we will flourish like the angels. Yeah. There will be living uh, stones of God in the holy temple. Yeah, mm -hmm. To, to uh, reflect his light on this earth. But the process is a process. And sometimes takes so much time. Yeah. Can, does exist such thing as an intelligent stone? Because we are the stones, yeah? Can, can it be? If it's a living one, can be, yeah? <laughs> Look in the Bible. Uh, God told Moses, take the road and gather thou the assembly and take your brother Aaron and so on and speak, speak to the rock. And the rock what will do? And it shall give you water. Speak to the rock. Would you like to be such rock? Imagine God, infinite God, speaking to you and to me. We are the rock, yeah? And says, look, uh, by your name, yeah? John, uh, Michael, Radu, yeah, whatever, yeah? Mary, I, I don't like you to continue like that. And I'll give you the strength and the grace to change. And because you are a living rock, you just accept. 
Is it difficult? Tell me. Is it difficult or not? No, because you're a living, understandable, intelligent rock and you accept the thing. Are we like that? When God speaks, low voice, yeah, like a friend. Please, friends, it's not good to do that. We, 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 what are we saying? Okay, God, thank you for telling. In this moment already, I'm doing that, what you require. Because your grace is sufficient for me. Do, do we do like that? No. Oh, no. It's not the case. Oh. Mm. Then how do we do? Oh, should oh. even Moses, when he was sent by God after forty years of being polished, go and take off my children from Egypt. What did Moses? Was the reaction of Moses? <laughs> was it like this or not? And then God became angry with him. Even with you, after so many years, after you understood my character and my plans and my reality, Moses. And then he said, okay, Father, I'll go. And your strength. It's not easy to be a living uh, uh, stone. is a miracle to be a living, understandable uh, uh, stone. To understand what he says and to obey at the moment by his grace. That's the thing. This is the easy way. The easy way. We may say, like the clay in the potter's hand. That's not like a stone. Yeah, after you dry and you put, you are put in the oven, you become like a, yeah, like a ceramic, not like a stone, but a strong thing. Yeah. But by now, that's the best way to be malleable, to be workable in the hands of God. Is it not the easy way? Yeah. Okay. Why should we complicate our life and not accept this wonderful thing? It says, those who are defective in character, in conduct, in habits, in practices, are to take heed to counsel and reproof. That means when God speaks, sorry, uh, when... Uh, uh, God speaks, then we have to uh, accept this thing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It says to take heed of the counsel and reproof, like an intelligent stone. This world of uh, is God's workshop. Mm -hmm. And every stone that can be used in the heavenly temple must be hewed and polished until it is uh, tried and precious stone fitted for its place in the Lord's building. So the, the process continues until we are a precious fitted stone for his building. But if we refuse to be trained and disciplined, we shall be as stones that will be not hewed and polished and that they are cast aside at last as useless. If we don't accept, we are free. Okay. If you don't want. It was Judas. The Lord loved him, attracted him, tried with very much carefulness to, to touch him, but was difficult because immediately he would, he would react like a, a sensitive, how to say, um, Kassant in, in other language. I don't know how you can say that in English. I really don't know the word. Uh, uh, something breakable, brokeable. When you hit instead of fragile, fragile yeah? Uh, there was, there was Judas comparing with the other disciples who were more, uh, workable, yeah? In the, in the, in the hands of God or more, uh, uh, open to, to be, helped. If we refuse, we, we, re, we uh, run the risk to be cast out of useless stones that cannot be prepared for such a wonderful uh, temple of God. Then what's the Lord doing with us if you are useless, if I am useless? Let's just cast away. Is this like this? The Lord does, does like this? 
No, because he is not like ourselves. He says, okay, if you don't accept the easy way, you are still free, but I'll change the environment. And I'll try the hard way. Friends, especially the young people here present, what would you choose, the hard way or the easy way for your heart? The hard way. It says, they dealt proudly and hearken not upon the commandments, but sin against thy judgments. And withdrew the shoulder and hardened their neck. That means instead of being malleable and uh, yeah, accepting the work of God, we are hardening ourselves. And then what's the other uh, means of God to, to deal with this kind of evil? Yeah? If you harden the neck, what's happening? Is, is it uh, nice? Is it easy to move when you have a hard neck? It's become painful, is it? We complicate our life for nothing. <laughs> that was a hat. Was discovered the hat in a mine. The mine was closed. I don't know what kind of mine. There was a mine, closed one. And somehow somebody forgot a hat inside that mine. Yeah. When they entered into the mine, they discovered that this hat was lost there, was forgotten there. Yeah. And uh, the thing was the hat was totally stony was made like that, like, uh, yeah, uh, of wool. It was nice material, yeah. But when they found the thing, it was totally stone. I had to put, put it into kind of, uh, yeah, museum to, to show the people the result. Question, how many millions of years the hat, which is organic, became stone, which is unorganic? In how many years do you think that it happened? Because some of you guys are studying in the schools and in the university that it took, I don't know how many millions and so on. The astonishing finding was the hat was transformed by hardening itself, yeah, from the wool uh, type of hat into a stony type of hat in exactly 22 years. Not millions of years, 22 years. Not a drop of organic stuff in it anymore. Everything became, under those circumstances, under those environments in the mind, became everything unorganic. Stone. Let's apply spiritual. In how, how much time can a child of God become stoned, useless, impossible to be worked on? If a, if a head takes 22 years, a heart, who, who knows? Who can play with those things? Adam was a child of God, perfect. In how many minutes did he become totally else kind of person? When, he, when God asked him, what's happening with you here? He says, not me, my wife. By the way, half an hour ago, you was loving your wife to the level to die with her and for her. And now, half an hour, not 22 years, maybe less than half an hour, who knows? It's, it's complicated for God to transform such people into living, uh, yeah? It's uh, really complicated. We thank the Lord that still insisting to make something good of us. It says, after privileges and opportunities have been given to God, of God, sorry, given to us from God, after light and truth have been brought home to the understanding. If persons still make excuses for their deformity of character and continue in their selfishness and jealousy, their hearts become as granite, like the head became of stone, yeah? Our heart, exactly what we don't want. Instead of being a living stone, our heart of flesh becomes of stone, which is impossible to be 
yeah, accepted in the kingdom of God. As granite, making it impossible for them to be reformed, except the sizzle, the hammer, and the polishing of the Spirit of the Lord. That's still hope for them, is it? We thank the Lord for still being something possible for this hardened hearts. Yeah. Then, if it's not, you, uh, the Lord cannot speak anymore with these hearts. Then what should he, uh, what has he to do? Take the hammer? Yeah. What if we continue to resist? It says, they made their hearts as adamant stone, not like granite. <sighs> That's diamond. Even worse. Because with granite, you can do, yeah, something, still. But if you become so strong as the hardest, yeah, in the natural world, the adamant, yeah. So, let's take an example to understand how terrible can it become, may it become. It says, it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal, his wife had told him, told him these things, and his heart, what happened? Died, Died within him and had become as a, as a stone. Was he still alive at that time or was dead? Uh, as he was receiving the news, Instead of melting down and accepting the warning and the transformation of the Spirit of God, he became what? Like a stone. And then what happened? About 10 days after, the Lord smote Nabal. And instead of being polished when he was hit by God, what happened? He fell apart. He broken away. Yeah? He died altogether. 10 days ago, he died spiritually because he was resisting the warning and the uh, yeah the word of of justice of god instead of accepting and humbling himself yeah hardening his heart and then 10 days after yeah and that's the thing it's uh, about a stone which cannot be used as a beautiful living statue yeah in the temple of god it's just useless yeah, the process. It says God's mighty. I think you have on your on your. Uh, yeah, if you want to remind uh, yourself, yeah, to remember home, you can read these things home as well. By God's mighty clever of truth, we have been taken from the quarry of the world and brought into the workshop of the Lord and be prepared for a place in His temple. In this work, the hammer and chisel must act their part. And then comes the polishing. Rebel not under the process of grace. You may be a rough stone on which much work must be done before you are prepared to be in the uh, yeah, place God designs you to fill. You need not be surprised if the hammer and the chisel, chisel, yeah, mm -hmm. of, uh, of God cuts away your defects of character. He alone can accomplish this work and be assured that he will not strike one useless blow. What does it mean? Is it painful, brethren? Is it? Yes, it is. But the promise is, if you accept for him to cut what it has to be cut, then no one blow is given uselessly. That's the promise. Second question, who does this? Who cuts off the thing? Who? It's only him. But we were reading in the Bible that were about, uh, uh, st about the strangers of the, by thousands, there were people cutting those stones. Mm -hmm. 
And we'll come back to that. Bitter, the process, bitterer or sweeter? Yeah? Uh, God has shown me that He gave His people a bitter cup to drink, to purify and cleanse them. It is a bitter drought. And they can make it still more bitter by murmuring, complaining, and ripening. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't like What's happening with me here? Where is my God? Why is He allow, allowing things to happen like this in my life? I don't... Yeah? You, you are familiar with the attitude. Yeah? Murmuring, complaining. Yeah. But those who receive it must have another drought, and therefore they make the things even worse. Another drought, bitter drought. For the first does not have its desired effect upon their heart. And if the second does not effect the work, then they must have another and another until it does have the design effect. And they will be left filthy, impure in heart. So that means if it has not this, then they are cast away. Yeah. Why should we complicate our Is it bitter? However, the process is bitter. Let's smile. Accept it. Do it smiling. <laughs> And that's it. Yeah. And then in three days, or like uh, the thief on the cross, half an hour, you are done. If you are rebelling and unhappy, then the Lord has to start the process tomorrow. A new, and the other day, a new, and a new. Yeah. Or we make it sweeter. God has shown me that He gave His people a bitter cup to drink. There's the same, yeah, initial. And now look, this bitter cup can be sweetened by patience by endurance and prayer and it will have its design effect upon the hearts of those who thus receive it and God will be honored and glorified it is no small thing to be a Christian and to be owned and approved of God it's not small thing makes sense let's allow the lord to do the thing in our heart how do you like bitter or sweeter how do you like the uh, easy way or the hard way the easy way may the lord give us the the grace of him to humble our hearts willingly in this process as you say father you know i don't know i don't understand what's happening with me here look but you know if we harden, that will be difficult. I'll share, especially with the younger ones that are still present here. And I thank you guys that you came. I'll share with you an experience. There was a friend of Sister White in her time. Yeah. She, he, he was living in the uh, uh, South African country. Yeah. South Africa. And he was a very rich man owning, I don't know how many hectares in hundreds of hectares of land and so on and he was having a restaurant and he was having stuff yeah so uh, for for the one entering just now i'll repeat uh, a, a moment there was a rich man friend of Helen white very rich yeah and he was having a restaurant and he was having a factory and he was having things there and he was a very good friend of Helen white and he rented i don't know by for money or for Nothing, yeah, he was giving, lending, how do you say that? The, the, the restaurant to some friends to do a feast there inside for three days. Then Ellen White wrote a letter to him. Brother such and such, you know that God loves you so much. And I appreciate your heart and your willingness to be in Lord, Lord's servant and so on. But he showed me there was sinful, it was a mistake for you to give the thank you own to these kind of feasts for the, the not Christians for, you know, to do in a... And then he... So, what do you believe? That was his reaction. Because this is the subject we deal with. How do we react when the, the hammer of God... Yeah. Then he said, what? Why is this lady interfering with my stuff here? It's my restaurant. 
It's not the restaurant of the church. It's my restaurant. I can do with it what I want. What was he doing? Softening or hardening his neck? Okay. Then Sister White wrote to him another letter. The Lord showed me that you are not happy with the whatever. Then he wouldn't open the letter. When he saw on the envelope, Ellen White as a issuer of the, yeah, expeditor. No. And then another letter. And then somehow the business started to come down, yeah, to fall. And then it was come in another letter. And he would face difficulties and he would lose stuff and he started to sell stuff. And then another letter. And then he was angry. What is his lady doing? I'm, I'm, I'm so sorrowful and so on. And she's insisting, I'm casting away the letters. And then, yeah, and he, he lost the, he finally he sold the, the restaurant. And then he sold the property. And then he sold the land. And then he sold it. And then the, the prices were dropping. And he still insisted to sell. Finally, he found a, a customer to sell, but a very cheap price and so on. And finally, he lost to make it shorter, yeah? He lost everything. <laughs> One day, he had to move out from his own house to stay, yeah, in a rented place because he was totally bankrupt. And when he was moving furniture, one thing dropped and then all the content dropped on the floor and he was unhappy. Look, I'm, I'm down to the ground. I'm, look what happened. I have now to gather back the things and to do what? And to move out of my house. And then when he was looking on the floor, he saw some unopened letters. And then he was, what's happening here? And then he took them, set, yeah, with the mess around him, he sat on something, yeah? And he started to put the things in their proper order, according with the dates, the issue, uh, issuing dates of the 50-something, if I'm not mistaken. There are some years that I read the, the, the history. 50-something letters. And then he started to open one by one. Mm. Brother such and such, the Lord loves me. He showed me that he was, he was rebellious when I wrote to you this. Please calm down. The Lord loves you. He's next to you. He will share. Yeah. And then, please don't sell. Don't sell. Repent. The Lord will bless your uh, business. The Lord will be good with you. He has wonderful plans. Don't do this. Don't do that. And then he was remembering. Ah, and I didn't open. And then I sold. And then next thing. And then, please, the Lord, show me you want to sell that part of your problem. Don't sell. And so on. And then he remembered the dates. And I sold. And then the other one. Don't do that. And I was doing. And then please don't do it. And he was doing. And all his life for years and years. Exactly as it happened. But before to happen. Was informed. Was graciously. Yeah. Helped by. But he was not received. Why? The heart like Nabal. Became the stone. Yeah, stony heart. He was dying in himself. And the Lord, what's the Lord doing with such a man? Thank him. Glory to God that he's not reacting to our terrible uh, attitude in the same way. He was still graciously insisting. Now the last letter came. He was in the, yeah, tearful face. He was opening the last letter and then he read like this. My dear brother, the Lord is still calling you. If you accept him now, he will receive you. He will save you. He will whatever. But he showed me that you didn't help him to make African continent his terrain or his ground. That means Adventist continent. Footnote for you and for me. The Lord melted down in tears. He knelt, he prayed, he was forgiven and he died later on as a faithful poor guy.
on one of the properties he sold today is the biggest diamond companies of the world. Still working in South Africa. The Lord wanted with him, with his finances. Imagine if he would have discovered those infinite riches, yeah? And then to invest in the work of God. Elewine said that he sh the Lord showed me that the continent would have accepted the Lord. Mm. What's Africa today? Mm. I was wondering, friends, how many times I was rebelling against the Word of God. When it came to me, saying, please, Radu, accept my counsel. I know what I'm telling you here. Would you accept me? I don't know how many times I was rebellious. I'm praying to the Lord not to continue anymore like that. I appeal to you, my friends, my, my brethren, especially the younger ones here present, try to consider with open heart, should I, should I uh, choose the hard way as this uh, brother in South Africa, or should I choose the easy way? When God is asking me something, why not to accept? Why not to be made a wonderful living stone of God for His, uh, uh, how do you say, glory uh, in, in the eternity and even in this earth? Remember Joseph, when he was sold as a, uh, uh, yeah, as a slave, how did he react? What's happening with me? Why? I was a nice guy in my family. I was faithful. And look what God is doing. Was like this? He says, with tearful face, he was uh, thinking on the counsel of his father while he was already a slave, going to Egypt for a terrible of, uh, rest of his life. But he would remain faithful. Amen. And then he was faithful and they were flourishing in the house of, of uh, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. And the master made him a kind of child. It's written, we don't have the time. Thank you for your uh, accepting me to be so long today. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry for that. And he made him like a son. It says that um, uh, the master observed that because of this last slave, everything runs well and he's blessed in his... Uh, yeah. And then out of his uh, faithfulness, what happened with him? One day he reached in the worst jail of the country with no possibility to get out alive from there. That was the, the thing. He could get out when the, the king was supposed to be, da to, to be dead. Yeah? If the pharaoh was sufficiently young, there's no chance to get out. And then he prayed and he prayed and nothing happened. And then he helped his uh, people around because he remained a nice child of God, a living stone of God. Yeah? And nothing happened. And his friend, the copper, yeah? Uh, forgot him and then he waited three more months and six more months nothing happened then he accustomed himself that he will be a prisoner for the rest of his life but Lord you know I am in the workshop of thine it says not a, um, how to say additional useless uh, hit will be given right. yeah you know what to do with me I'm yours no problem and then what happened when he reached at that level, then the, the, the prison was open and he became the prime minister of the empire. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It depends how we choose the easy way or the hard way. Yeah? Let's pray to the Lord to uh, re-edit this type of uh, experiences of the past in our own life. David, uh, when he was uh, dealing with, uh, with uh, Nabal, you remember what he said? Ah, it's like that. God forbid that till morning, one of these houses is still alive. Is it? Yeah. Guys, take your swords now. Yeah, this was the way of... Uh, 
was quite hard. At the end of his life, look, David, what he became. It says, let him curse, because the Lord had said unto him, curse David. He was no crown, wearing no crown at the time. He was running from Absalom, his son. It was terrible. Yeah, and somebody was mocking him, was cursing him. And one of his uh, generals was saying, let me defend the honor of my king here. This is what the sons of uh, Zeruiah, what would they If the Lord told this guy, curse David, let him curse. If you have a bad boss in your business, bad, yeah? Crushing you, what should you say? If the Lord put my boss to be so bad with me, let him be as he wants. That's good. I have a question. Did God ask that guy to curse David? No. But the Lord was using that uh, person to chop off some things from David, is it? To make him a beautiful living stone in the temple. That's the approach. If you have a colleague, if you have a neighbor, if we have a mother, or I don't know, an uncle who was crushing you, Thank the Lord. It's shortening the process to be polished and to be hewed and to enter brilliantly one day in the temple of God. Behold my son, which uh, came forth of my bowels, seeks my life. How much more now uh, this Benjamin do it? Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord told him, yeah, put him to do it. How was uh, uh, Joseph saying about being himself in Egypt? He says, not you brought me to Egypt. The Lord brought, what? The Lord sold him to Ishmaelites or his brethren, brothers. But he said three times in five verses, not you, but God. Why? Because only God has the hammer and has the seizure. It's written. Yeah. And now the uh, the last uh, yeah thing before we uh, just have the conclusion, the last point of the, the study is this one, short but intense. <sighs> Solomon took the census, that means count all the aliens, all the strangers in Israel. And after the census, they found 153,600. Then he put the 72 carry and the 80 to cut and the others to uh, uh, how say supervise what were they the strangers did they do a good job any hit of a hammer when uh, they were built in Jerusalem when the children of God were building in Jerusalem any hit of a hammer or no no, that means they were professionals, but they were strangers of Israel. Question, when the temple was ready, did any one of them come in the temple? Be careful. Stone cutters are not allowed in the holy temple of God. If you have a heart to sizzle everybody around, brother, what did you do this? And what, sister, why are you, and then look and, yeah, if you have a heart to do that all the time, you may be a professional stone cutter. You may be using the hands of God to help some people in the church, but if you remain like that, stone cutters are not allowed in the temple. We have in the reform movement some people, professionals, stone cutters. That's the good news. Why? God is using good stone cutters because He is doing the job through them. We read already. But bad news for the stone cutters. If they remain like that, will they go to heaven? No. Is this the last answer you give? I have another opinion. 
they can go in under which condition oh they change position from stone cutter they now become stones and other stone cutters have to yeah polish them and now yes they can become israelites they can become no israelites they can become children of god uh, living uh, yeah is it thank the lord for that and um, we may meditate for the uh, time to come in our life yeah for you have tested the kit the kindness of the lord come to him to that living stone rejected by man but put in god's sight chosen in yeah in god's sight chosen as precious and like living stones be yourself built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood yeah to offer spiritual sacrifice acceptable to god yeah come to him help others to do the same don't cut let the lord cut things around yeah if you are a stone cutter we already established that's not for you the heaven yeah and now all things it says in romans are working together for good the word the show the the stone cutters are professionals doesn't matter who is who the lord is behind them and the lord does the job so don't be unhappy with the stone cutters they are nice guys love them as jesus uh loved and for uh, forgave the persecutors and now you have still in your in your papers yeah god never leads his children otherwise then they would choose to be led if they could see at the end from the beginning and descend the glory of the purpose of god what the lord why did you do this with me one day when the angel will show you in the books of heaven look why look why and now i'm asking you will say the angel i'm asking you would you choose a different way for you in 2018 in washington yeah or in maryland yeah would you choose a different way or would you accept exactly oh thank the lord that he chose like that for me i met these professionals who really hit me so strong and i had that type of husband or i don't know that type of wife there was the stone cutters in the house it was terrible yeah sometimes happens or in the church or i don't know in the work or in the thank god for that we'll never choose a different way if we would know exactly which will be the end but the lord knows the end and therefore he permits things yeah and the result will be this last verse I'll make up my jewels and I'll spare them as a man spares his own son that serves him. You will be a jewel of God in the hands of God to be fit yeah, in the temple of God as living uh, stones, living precious stones of God forever and ever to reflect his glory. May he bless us to like this uh, uh live our happy life with jesus sometimes not sweet not so pleasing to self but so blessed amen